Hi, and welcome back to Keen Prospecting. Today's video will be a little bit different than normal, and we'll be taking a look at the history and geology of Jupiter's Creek and the Achunga Goldfields. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on these kind of videos so I can best tailor the videos I make to suit you guys. In 1852, Echunga was recognised as the first goldfields in South Australia. It stretched from Harndorf to Mount Bold Reservoir. Echunga was the most important goldfield in SA's early history, with around 200,000 ounces of gold being produced. The goldfield sits on freshwater sand, gravel and ironstone conglomerate from the tertiary age covering the raised areas above weathered slate and quartzite of the Precambrian age. Gold in the area tends to occur as alluvial deposits in leads of the tertiary age and modern alluvium. The tertiary deposits vary in depth and can be found less than one metre down at Jupiter's Creek and up to 15 metres down at Chapel Hill. In 1868, Thomas Plain settled near Echunga as a farmer when in August, Thomas along with Henry Sanders discovered gold at Jupiter's Creek. Thomas would later go on to be a butcher and blacksmith to the goldfields and prospect in his spare time. The excitement of the find brought people from all over the state including nearly 40 men from Ballarat and within weeks 500 miners rights were issued at 2 shillings and 6 pence each. By September 1868 there was about 1,300 people on site, although that number dropped to several hundred by the end of the year. Mid-year of 1869, when most of the alluvial had been worked, reef mining became more popular with companies such as Beatrice Gold Mining Company, but without a lot of success and had gone into liquidation by 1871. A small handful of alluvial prospectors stayed on site and in 1884 several small nuggets were found on the dump of an abandoned shaft. Once again the find sparked more interest and the Crystal and Phoenix mines were started but never yielded gold in enough quantities to keep going. Between 1904 and 1907 an attempt at large scale hydraulic sluicing was undertaken but failed due to the low grade of material. Wasn't until the depression when unemployment went up and the value of gold started to rise that people had a renewed interest in the gold fields at Jupiter's Creek. As a little known fact that Jupiter's Creek also produced up to 50 saleable diamonds, the largest being 5 carats, and a total estimate of 200 small colourless to yellow diamonds being found. Jupiter's Creek is now on a historic reserve under the control of the Department of State Development and is open to the public for fosking slash bushwalking without the need for a permit. There is a lot of information online if you are thinking of paying the area a visit, and on the odd occasion you will still hear stories of people having some luck with metal detectors, and I'm sure there is still good gold to be found. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like my videos, please help our channel out by clicking like, subscribe and the notification bell. But more importantly, share it around and leave me some feedback in the comments below. Also, check out our Facebook group for a behind the scenes look and to keep updated on what's going on at Keen Prospecting. It's a safe, friendly environment where you can share your thoughts, experiences and pictures when it comes to prospecting. We also hold competitions and giveaways on Facebook for our viewers. Thanks again for watching and as always, happy prospecting.